Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Vincent, and this is my research case study project on the former Major League Baseball player named Derek Jeter and his 2010 contract negotiation with the New York Yankees. The parties involved were Derek Jeter, represented by his agent Casey Close, and the New York Yankees, who was represented by General Man Manager and Senior Vice Pe President Brian Cashman. The conflict was that Derek Jeter was offered $45 million for three years, but thought he deserved more because of what he did for the Yankees brand and the whole franchise. He basically would be taking pay cut, and the contract was only for three years. The Yankees wanted to pay Jeter for being a good baseball player on the field. The Yankees thought that his baseball career might be on the way down after the way his last season ended. This is why they only offered Jeter a three-year contract for $45 million. Jeter wanted to be paid more than $45 million for three years. He was actually seeking another 67-year contract deal. Jeter feels, feels that he has brought so much to the Yankees franchise and felt that it was worth more than they were offering. The Yankees representative Brian Cashman did not want to take the risk of signing him for the lengthy period of six to seven years knowing that he was possibly going down as a player. They considered his age and ending stats for the previous season before they came up with their offer. Underlying interest. Jeter basically loved playing for the Yankees and wanted to continue his baseball career with them. He just wanted to be treated fairly according to what he brought to the team. Jeter was known for passing Lou Gehrig's hitting record in 2009 and hitting his 2722nd hit. This was the most in franchise history. Jeter was also named the All-Star Game and World Series MVP. MVP in the game season. Even though Jeter had a lot of highlights throughout his baseball career, the Yankees considered doing a contract that would be beneficial to their organization. That was to pay him according to him being a good baseball player and not as a marketing tool. Negotiating techniques. Uh, focus on interest. Jeter continued to remind the Yankees that he was more than just a baseball player, but he was a positive influence and he was valuable to the franchise. He used his status and role to try to persuade the organization to give him a better deal. Yankee manager Brian Cashman created negative emotions when he told Jeter that he would rather have Troy Tyler Whiskey at shortstop. I think both parties showed affiliation by them wanting what was best for the Yankees at that time. I think that Jeter maintained a good attitude even though he was not happy that the public was aware of some of the back and forth that was going on between him and the Yankees during negotiation. He stayed focused on his underlying interests. I think it was wrong that some of the negative Negative parts of the negotiating process got to the public, like statements the Yankees representative made about Jeter and his agent Close needing to drink reality potion when they found the $45 million contract to be baffling. This negotiation did come to an agreement. The outcome? Jeter and the Yankees finally came to an agreement by having a contract for three years, $51 million, with a possible fourth year, if certain incentives were met by Jeter. This could possibly be $65 million for four years. Pending on Jeter's performance, future negotiations would definitely be possible with the Yankees.